Today's review is sponsored by the new Mach 50 Razor. You'll never have to worry about facial hair again because you won't have any skin left. The funeral home will love your ultra-clean shave. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. The bird with the crystal plumage. Look out behind! Ah! Ah! Hello, everybody. Um, once again, I have to apologize for not being in my typical location. Um, for those of you who have uh, been watching for the past few weeks, I've got a very busy week of uh, dog sitting and pet sitting for the next few months, um, resulting in me not being able to film in my typical location. Uh, so. I'm going to be in various locations until I can get back in front of my collection. Um, so I apologize if the lighting is off here, and I severely apologize for the echoey audio in this room. This was the only room I had to film in this particular location. Uh, so on that note, uh, let's get on with the video. And again, very, very sorry, very sorry for the audio. Anyway, today we're looking at The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. This is the movie that began the giallo boom in the 70s. The genre got its jumpstart in the 1960s with Mario Bava and Umberto Lenzi. Mario Bava giving us The Girl Who Knew Too Much, aka The Evil Eye, and uh, Blood and Black Lace, which I adore, and Umberto Lenzi giving us Paranoia and So Sweet, So Perverse. But it was the bird with the crystal plumage that started the golden age of giallo cinema, and this was Dario Argento's first movie. This is a hell of a debut. Oh. We follow Sam, an American writer on vacation in Rome. A few days before he's supposed to head home, he witnesses the brutal attempted murder of a young art gallery owner. How do I open the door? <laughs> Luckily, the young woman survives the attack, but the danger is not over. Young women continue to be murdered throughout the city as the killer threatens the life of Sam and his girlfriend, Julia. As the police try to hunt down the murderer, Sam does his own investigation to try and find the killer before he becomes the next victim. Uh, what do you suggest I do? Bird with the Crystal Plumage does have your typical giallo plot. Someone witnesses a murder, they try to find the killer as the body count rises. You do see this premise in a lot of gialli. But that doesn't bother me. One, because this was one of the earlier giallo flicks. Two, I don't think there's anything wrong with genres having similar plots in their movies, as long as the movie is done well, and they do have their own spin on that typical plot. Plus, I'm a slasher fan, and we slasher fans can admit that a lot of slasher movies have similar premises to other slasher flicks. So, yeah, it doesn't bother me. Bird with the Crystal Plumage has one of my favorite scenes in Giallo cinema. When Sam witnesses the attempted murder, it's one of the most suspenseful scenes in Giallo. Sam is trying to get to this woman who's lying there bleeding to death, but her attacker manages to trap Sam by locking him behind two automatic doors. So he's trying to get to this woman, but he can't, and he can't leave to call the police either. All he can do is stand there and watch as this woman begs him for help. I can't get in! How do I open the door? The scene is perfectly set up, perfectly executed, and it adds to Sam's motivation. We understand why he wants to find the killer. He was forced to watch this woman bleed, and he couldn't help her. 
Luckily, the woman does survive, but we still understand Sam's motivation. <laughs> there are a lot of suspenseful moments in this movie, and the plot allows for a lot of tension. There's a killer out there murdering women, Sam is trying to find the killer, and the killer is trying to get Sam without getting caught. The police have people watching Sam and his girlfriend, so the killer has to find a way through them. Run, run. The kills are set up so well. There's some good stalking scenes before each kill. We don't just see the killer appear and then stab his victims, no. We watch them watching their prey, taking pictures of them, following them home. It grows the tension before the first strike, which makes each kill even better. We also get some quality chase scenes in this movie. And this movie loves its reveals. It can't just show a dead body or show the killer in the room. No, it has to have some kind of creative reveal of something, like someone kneeling down to reveal a corpse behind them, or a point of view shot revealing the killer. <laughs> The kills are brutal, but not graphic in terms of a giallo movie, especially a Dario Argento giallo. Argento movies are known for having great, bloody, brutal kills. Deep Red, Tenebre, Phenomena, Suspiria has one of the greatest opening kills in horror. <laughs> The kills in Bird with the Crystal Plumage are great, but not as graphic as you would see in other Argento movies. There's more suggested brutality here. It's Hitchcockian in nature. We see the flash of a knife, and then we see blood splatter on the floor or on the bed. And I just gotta say, I love straight razor kills in movies. I'm sure I've said that in other videos, but I'm gonna say it again here. Straight razors are some of my favorite weapons in horror movies. We see them in quite a few Italian horror movies. We've seen them in a few American horror movies. I'm sure other countries as well. I just love straight razors, and I want to see more straight razors in horror movies. It's just a cool weapon to me. It creates a nice aesthetic for the killer. There are a fair amount of kills throughout the movie, but the film keeps you interested and entertained between the deaths. Watching Sam work with the police, watching Sam do his own investigation. But it's the interesting side characters that make this film fun to watch. Dario Argento is no stranger to putting quirky characters in his movies, and Bird with the Crystal Plumage has plenty of them. Elevator. Get an elevator, huh? Who are you? I'm Faina. Faina, come on in. One that stood out to me is the painter. Throughout the film, a strange painting is the center of Sam's investigation. It's this disturbing painting of a woman being murdered. Sam finds the man who made the painting, and he's a weirdo. Hey, why did you wall up your house? To keep out the busybodies. Nobody gets in here unless I want them to. When I first watched this movie, I recognized the guy playing the painter. I said, holy shit, that's Mario Adorf. He's the guy who played Luca Canali in The Italian Connection, which is one of my favorite Eurocrime flicks. It's always nice seeing him pop up in other movies. I only paint mystical scenes. Why? 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 Because I feel mystical, if it's any of your damn business. No, 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 it's not. Bird with the Crystal Plumage is one of my favorite Dario Argento giallo flicks. It's between this one and Opera, which was the first Italian horror movie I ever saw. Yes, I like it more than Deep Red and Tenebrae. 
These are all great movies, but Bird with the Crystal Plumage just tickles my fancy a little more. For Dario Argento's first movie, he did a great job. And with that, let's get to the Brindhouse rankings. We've got a body count of nine, but I'm counting kills that were shown to us in photographs. The kills consist of, but are not limited to, stabbings, straight razor slashings, falls to death, and getting hit by a car. It reaches the giallo requirements with gloved hands, an unknown killer, brutal kills, and beautiful locations. There's a tiny amount of nudity in this flick with a see-through top and a flash of a nipple, but other than that, there's not much. The story is interesting. Watching Sam's cat and mouse game with the killer is fun to watch. The side characters help make this movie entertaining. Plenty of quirky characters to keep our interest. The kills are more suggested, but still brutal. Well done without being too graphic. The movie leans more into the suspense. The tension is distributed well throughout the film. And the movie has a solid climax. I'm giving this a 4.8 out of 5, a great giallo flick, especially for Argento's first movie. As always, I want to thank all of you for continuing to watch and support this channel. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know your favorite debut film of a director. If you can't think of one, then just give me your favorite early movie from your favorite director. This is The Maniac, here to remind you that the grindhouse will never die. I remember the first movie I ever made. It was a complete and total disaster. But that's what you get for being an ambitious six-year-old.